Welcome to Safe Breakers, where every episode sees a safe containing £5,000 placed in an almost inaccessible location. Teams of mad cat mechanics and unhinged engineers are challenged to design and build uniquely specialised machines. Machines that must race to collect the codes to the safe. Got it, got it, got it. Win the race. And win the chance to break the safe. This time on Safe Breakers, we get down and dirty with diggers. The two teams must construct fast, effective and powerful diggers to clear a path to the safe. The code to the safe has been buried under increasingly large piles of aggregate. The teams must race along the track, clearing the piles and collecting the code. The fastest team to do so earns the right to break the safe. The only problem is... The safe itself is going to be buried right here, under 14 tonnes of recycled tarmac. We might be here sometime. Safe Breakers HQ, a disused warehouse deep in the Welsh Valleys. Inside, we've created a state-of-the-art build zone containing every tool our teams could ever need. If you wanted to buy yourself an average digger, it's going to set you back about £85,000. They take four months to build, but you will be able to lift up to nine tonnes in your bucket. Our teams, well, they only have to lift five tonnes. So they don't need nearly as much money or time, which is lucky, because they're going to have two days and £1,000. So how about we meet the teams who, quite literally, are going to be digging for victory? PhDs, truckers, welcome to our warehouse. We've given you three weeks and £1,000 to plan and design your builds. You've got two days before your designs will come together and race for our safe. You up for this, boys? Yes. Should we get started? Yes. Okay, off you go. Our first team are the truckers. They are Dave, Kev, Sean, and team leader Mick, workmates from Lancashire. We all work at uh, truck manufacturers in, in the northwest of uh, England. These boys are a very tight knit unit. We've worked together for about 10 years, on and off. Yeah. We all seem to gravitate back to each other, don't we? Yeah, we always come back together, yeah, it's great fun, isn't it? Well, we're good friends. They spend their days as part of a production line that turns out dozens of trucks a day. You can say one in every four trucks on the road is perhaps built by us. Yeah, we build trucks, we get them right, first time, on time, every time. Blimey, these boys really know what they're doing. So, who dare take on the might of the truckers? My name's Stephen, this is the PhDs, this is Ian, Al and James. We met at university, the University of Strathclyde up in Glasgow. Students? We were all mechanical engineers by first degree, so before we've gone off and specialised in different topics. So what are these PhD students specialising in? Digger design? Well, uh, my area of speciality is space engineering. Uh, my PhD is in uh, nuclear engineering. My PhD specialisation is in offshore wind turbines. Oh well, maybe Al's doing something to do with diggers. <laughs> and I specialise in golf ball design. Brilliant. How's golf ball design going to help you build a digger? We have yeah. no experience at diggers <laughs> at all. <laughs> the priority is number one is not embarrass yourselves. Number two, beat the other team. And number three is get the money. Yeah, good luck with that, boys. So it's the PhDs versus the truckers, but only one team will earn the chance to take home £5,000. Right, Kev, let's get this roof off. To put together their diggers, each team was given £1,000 and three weeks' prep time. The truckers spent their cash on an old 4x4, steel sheets and joists, mounted rollers and chains. 
As expected, the truckers have made a blistering start, stripping the roof off their 4x4. Four four. Well, lads, let's show these students how to get a body off. Whoop! Oh, Our two teams are competing under the watchful gaze of chief in-house engineer Andy Garrett. It's his job to make sure that each design is safe and works well enough to at least make it to the start line. Yo. You, you've made great progress yeah. uh, so far. So you are used to not only building things quick sharp, but building things that do not go wrong, that always yeah. work perfectly. Yeah, we have the same. We have it right first time, on time, every time. Right, first time, on time, every time. Yeah. It's a good motto for the show. It is. Yeah. Mick, talk us through your design. So the design, basically, is it's a beam which comes out the back of the truck with lifting equipment on it, four different tools. The truckers have called on all their experience to produce an ingenious design. It consists of a large box frame mounted on the rear of their stripped-back vehicle. This frame supports a pivoting arm. The truckers have opted for four interchangeable digger heads to tackle the different types of aggregate. A drag bucket, an oversized spade, a drag net, and a scissor bucket. The truckers started work on the scissor bucket first, as it's the tool that they're going to rely on most during the challenge. They've already fabricated one half of the main bucket, and Mick's keen to show it off. Okay. So this is the, the tool of your four tools. This is the tool that's going to do 70% of the clearing and lifting? Yeah, that's right. Is there a reason why you've chosen to do it in such dainty it's sort of... Stuff? Speed. I'm just a bit worried because it seems quite small. A scissor bucket thing that my two-year-old could lift. It's not going to be a problem. I do admire his confidence. We've got experience. We're not students. We don't lie in bed all day. <laughs> we work for a living. <laughs> now it's the turn of the inexperienced students to take their roof off. Come on, lads. Big, strong lads like you. Come on. You don't know what you're doing. When you're ready. Oh! Hey, well done. The PhDs spent their £1,000 on an old Jeep, several metres of steel tubing, winches, some alternators and a digger bucket. Steve. How's it going? Now, uh, we're slightly concerned, Steve, that you guys actually have any idea what you're doing. Not much. You, you've not done it before? This is our first big project as a whole team. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, Steve, talk us through the design. Well, it's very simple. We've just basically taken the roof off and we're just going to fit a gigantic spade and use the power of the Land Rover to power it. The PhDs have gone for a reasonably simple piece of technology. A large A-frame supports their digger arm that supports a standard digger bucket. The whole system is controlled by winches powered by their Jeep, one attached to the bucket and one at the base of the arm, providing double the power. What, what are you worried about in terms of the design? Uh, well, one of the sort of key factors of it is making sure that when the bucket is fully loaded, that it is able to lift without the front end lifting up. Otherwise, we'll be doing wheelies all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> With four hours build time gone, the truckers are making predictably good progress. They're already installing their large box frame. We have to lift it over the wheel arch, and it's going to sit in this position here. Right. Watch, watch your foot in. And Kev has started work on the first of the four digger heads, the dragnet. Over on the other side, the PhDs are also making good progress as they prepare to mount their digger arm. We need to chop some off the back, maybe. Okay. Having met both teams, I take Chief Engineer Andy to one side to see what he makes of their designs. So, we go and see PhD students, fully expecting to be a bunch of Muppets. But they know what they're doing, don't they? Mm. They've got no experience, but, as you can see, they're getting on well. Andy's main concern with the PhDs is that their digger arm doesn't pivot, so once they have a full bucket, they have to move their whole vehicle to deposit the load. They're going to have to drive fast, they're going to have to do a lot of manoeuvring, but if they can fill that bucket every time, they're going to move the stuff quite quick. But what about the truckers? The truckers have got a big advantage with their pivoting arm. And it slides, yeah, it sounds it great. It slides across, so they haven't got to reposition the vehicle every time. But then, 
they're going to change their digging head so many times, it's going to waste minutes. How are they going to know which one's going to be the best one until they've tried them all? So, perhaps the students aren't totally clueless. Sort of visualise exactly how it's going to look. And maybe the truckers aren't as flawless as we first thought. This is starting to get interesting. It's safe breakers. Our two teams are hard at it constructing their diggers. Machines capable of shifting increasingly large piles of aggregate to get to the numbers that form the combination to our safe. The fastest team wins the right to try and break the safe and take home £5,000. We're seven hours into day one and the PhDs are continuing to impress. Hey guys, let's crack on and get this arm in place. Having made their digger arm, they're mounting it onto the large A-frame that they're building on the back of their Jeep. Level enough. Level enough. <laughs> <It'll> do. <laughs> Meanwhile, the truckers are busy fabricating yet another digger tool. This time, it's the drag bucket. The job of the drag bucket is to take everything off the top of the pile, and then we can go in with the scissor bucket to take the rest. Yeah. Yeah. You ready for putting these rolls up, buddy? Yeah, let's put them up. With both teams making great progress, I decide to sneak off to learn a bit more about the art of building diggers. Now this is what I call a digger. Get out. How's that? <laughs> Weighing in at a mighty 300 tonnes, it can lift a mind-bending 30 tonnes in each scoop, and it handles like a dream. <laughs> Operator Ron Austin keeps a nervous eye on me as I put in an after-hour shift at this fully operational coal mine, all in the name of research. So come on then, Ron, what do I need to know about digging? Ben, it's not complicated, it's not rocket science. As long as they're well balanced, if you've got a big bucket, you need a big machine to balance it and a big engine to power it in. So no. there's no point having a big engine with a small bucket? No, 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 pro no uh, point whatsoever. Ron has spent his entire working life with diggers, so it's going to be good to hear what he thinks about our team's designs. Our truckers, Ron, they've got this big Swiss Army digger, four different digger heads. What do you make of that? It sounds rubbish to me, to be honest. <laughs> I really don't think it's going to work. Because? Well, because the attachments you'd have to keep changing all the time. Um, they've got to be quite efficient with that. And is the machine, is the attachments too big or too small for the machine? Well, at least he's honest. I wonder what he makes of the students. Our other team, the PhDs. Yeah. Very simple. Uh, they've got winches with a very simple spade at the back that they're going yeah. to reverse in. What do you think of their design? I think it's an old-fashioned idea, and it, it's worked in the past. So our, our PhD students have gone old school. They've gone old school, yeah, with the ropes. They've got the simple machine. As long as they've got the bucket size right, would you say that it's the PhDs that you think are going to do uh, it? Yeah, personally, I would, yes. So, our refreshingly frank expert fancies the PhD's simple design over the complexities of the trucker's vehicle. Let's talk about the test tomorrow. Test, yeah. What are you testing? We are testing the one and only scissor lift bucket. And the worry if it doesn't work? If you think we're concerned now, yeah. is it not picking up enough? We have just discovered something else now. What's that? It looks like the other team know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's come as a surprise to us too. Next door, the PhD's machine is also starting to take shape as they finish off their large A-frame and attach the bucket to their digger arm. Perfect. Yep. Starting to come together. Now then, Steve. How's it going? It's looking pretty good, isn't it? You lot have actually done some stuff. Of course. What did you expect? Well, I expected you to be a shambles, to be honest. <laughs> uh, tomorrow is test day, of course. What yep. is it that you're going to be testing? We're going to load the bucket and just see how much weight it can take. Because your, your worry is that once it's 
in the air, it could cause the uh, yeah, it could cause the vehicle the, to yeah, it could cause the vehicle to lift up at the time. Well, we're going to load it to see what that holds, and then if we can take more, we might just build a bigger bucket. Just get a bigger bucket. So everything, everyone's really confident. Yeah. Nothing go wrong. Mm, nah. Fair Not little. so far. What are we doing tonight? <laughs> OK, teams, truckers, PhDs, that's your first day done. Your vehicles are starting to take shape. Big day tomorrow. So have a good night's sleep, and we'll see you bright and early. Cheers, lads. We're ready for test, most definitely, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah, proof is in the pudding, as you said. Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. pudding will be ready for eating. Yeah. Worryingly smoothly, I think, so far. <laughs> yeah, we've got a pretty successful day one. Um, we've a lot. We've, we've achieved a lot, oh, we've done as you can see. So, at the end of day one, both teams seem happy, but tomorrow they face their first real challenge. It's the start of day two. Our teams have got 10 hours left to complete their build, and in a few hours, I'm going to be dragging them in here into our test arena to find out if they're actually going to work. In the warehouse, the PhDs are working hard to get their digger ready for test. They're mounting their winches that will power the digger arm. Awesome. Next door, the truckers are also preparing their machine for test, but a last-minute change of heart from Captain Mick has slowed things down. I'm going to have to... Eat humble pie and say, Ben was right. He's decided to take my advice and make his all-important scissor bucket bigger. Bigger is better. He's going to be small. Yeah. Mick will have to work fast if he's going to have his new super-sized scissor bucket ready to test. It's test time. First up, the PhDs. Time to find out if their vehicle can keep all four wheels on the ground when their bucket has a full load. If the vehicle tips, it'll leave them stranded, which isn't ideal in a race situation. PhDs, welcome to the test area. Um, she's looking very impressive. Looks well, pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, Steve, talk us through again what we're going to be testing. Well, we're basically just going to keep it simple. We're going to fill the bucket to its loading point and then lift it and see if the Land Rover stays on all four wheels. Make sure it doesn't tip. If it does work, what's the plan? We're planning on making the bucket a bit bigger so we can take more loads. They'll do this by welding steel plating to the existing bucket, but it's a risky strategy as they won't be able to test their new larger bucket before race day. That's going to be good old That'll engineering be... judgment. Yeah, instinct. We'll get an idea. Exactly. We'll get an instinct. idea. You'll get an idea, which is the key thing. How about we uh, see you in action then, yeah? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, yeah. let's get the test going. So we're keeping an eye on the front wheels mm. as they go into load. Great work. Oh, oh, oh. Dug in nicely. What do you reckon, James? About a third of a ton you've got in the bucket? Roughly. Let's see if right, it are. works. It's OK. The winch is a bit slow. Eight tons to move. And the front wheels seem to be pretty secure. Yeah, fine. It's going to work. Yay! A resounding success for the PhDs. Good stuff. Well, well done. Uh, it does work brilliantly, uh, as you've proved. And you can get yourselves back to your um, build areas. Well done, boys. Awesome, boys. Awesome. Great. Now we need to crack on. With a successful test under their belt, the PhDs set about increasing the size of their bucket. It's a gamble, but if it pays off, they'll have a much more effective digger come race day. After nearly two days of building their diggers, only four hours remain before the PhDs and the truckers go head to head in a time trial race collecting codes to the safe as they dig their way along our course. 
The fastest team will get a chance to break the safe and win £5,000. Before race day, both teams are given the chance to test their machines. Things couldn't have gone much better for the PhDs, but having shown that their vehicle won't tip up under the weight of a full bucket, they've decided to gamble by making their bucket bigger. If this works, they'll have a much more effective digger, but if it doesn't, the weight of the bigger bucket will tip up their vehicle, leaving them stranded at the very first hurdle. After that fantastic result for the PhDs, the pressure is now firmly on Mick and his all-new Bigger Better Scissor Bucket as the truckers head into the test arena. Time for the truckers to find out if the scissor bucket is going to be the digging dream that Mick predicted. Everyone out. The truckers are in the house. We're in the house. Mick! I'm looking at the bucket. But I think I suggested yesterday that it might be a bit small. It's grown a bit. Have the, have the engineering fairies <laughs> been in? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in terms of how yeah. it's, how it's uh, turned yes. out? It's going to be lowered onto the pile. Yep. What we're here to find out is, when it closes, it will actually dig in and pick up material with it. To remove from the top yeah. of the pile. Well, should we see if it works? Yeah. Let's test, boys. Let's right. test. Let's go. You look like you're fishing, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> you just drift left, 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 and then let it go. Let it go. Right. Lift, Kev. Lift. We've hardly got anything there, haven't we? Just try again. It closed. It closed. It definitely closed. Yeah, but just, just let it go on. Right, should we try again? Yeah, try again. And it's only grabbing a handful. Right. You're not going to get a very loud cheer here. Well, obviously, it's disappointing, cos, let's be honest, it, it's not working, is it? It's not working. OK, well, look, get focused on the other three tools that you've got for the uh, Swiss Army digger, and um, we'll catch up later. Uh, that was a bit of a disappointment. I'm gutted. The plan was to do 70% of our lifting with that scissor bucket. One, two, three. But they still have three digging tools left. Mick sets about constructing the final tool, Super Spade. It's a superhuman spade uh, operated by three men. In layman's terms, it's an oversized shovel. But with only two hours build time remaining, Mick's in a race against time to get it finished. OK, we can let go. Next door, the PhDs are flying. They're on their last job of the day, attaching the alternators. These will take power from the engine to keep the winch batteries fully charged for the duration of the race. With the three tools finished, Mick puts the truckers through a last-minute rehearsal to ensure that everyone knows exactly how each tool will work. Right, top layer. Net takes the top layer down. Middle layer, we'll take it out down with the big bucket. Deploy. Take it back. OK, drop. And winch it. And then right at the bottom, we're going with a big speed. And tip. Over on the other side, the PhDs finish in style. Boys, we're going for the hot rod look, so let's see what this looks like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Teams, truckers, PhDs, that's it. Your time is up. But get yourselves at home, have a good night's sleep, rest up, cos tomorrow we race. And I can't wait. See you then, lads. It's looking pretty good. I think we're pretty impressed. We're pretty happy with it. I don't know if we're going to win, but we'll, we'll wait and see tomorrow. Even if we don't win the money, I'm pretty sure we can sell this design for a 5G. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at the winners. We've got a routine nailed. We're just going to go for it. We're going to yeah. break that safe. We're going to win the race and break that safe. Yeah. £5,000 that's coming on wheels. We better get security corps to give us a ride home.
Definitely. The PhDs have produced a lesson in old school simplicity. The attractively angled A-frame and powerful winch cables are a tested success. But a subsequent bucket extension has thrown the vehicle's balance under load back into question. It's a gold-toothed gamble, but if it pays off, it's going to be one hell of a happy hour for our students. The truckers have created a chimera, but this multi-headed monster is no myth. Three interchangeable heads lie poised under the pivoting arm, knowing that if they can come together in a slickly choreographed charge, they might just find themselves on the winning team. Because yes, this design is complicated and difficult to use, but so was the Rubik's Cube, and I don't mind telling you how well that turned out. It's race day. At this digger training college in the hills north of Swansea, our two teams will compete in a time trial. Along the race course, the numbers that form the combination to our safe have been buried under increasingly large piles of aggregate. The first team to complete the course and dig out the numbers that make up the code earns the right to try and break the safe and win £5,000. So the team starts right here. They have to go down this slope, negotiate the mud and the water before they arrive at the first number. And that number is buried here under three tonnes of sand. And once they've dug that out, it's onto the second number. Buried under six tonnes of gravel. Once they've excavated that number, it's onto the final pile, an eye-watering nine tonnes of rubble. When they've secured the final number, the clock will stop once they reach the top of our hill. We're pretty confident we're going to win. We've got some good tools to deploy, and we're going to carry out the task really well. We're absolutely going to smash it. Well, it's race day, and we're feeling pretty good. I think we've done a grand job, and we're, yeah. we're looking forward to it. We're confident that yeah. our, simple, our simple approach is still the best approach. Morning, gents. So, PhDs, truckers, it's race day. This is, without doubt, the dirtiest challenge we've set on Safe Breakers. The question is, which one of you teams is truly up to it? It's a time trial. The team that gets the numbers the quickest and mounts that hill at the end will get a chance to break us safe and could be going home with £5,000. You ready for this? Yeah. yeah. You up for it? Right on. OK. First on the start line, the PhDs. Will their enlarged and untested digger bucket tip the vehicle, leaving them stranded? Ready to watch, Andy? Ready. OK, let's get them going. Here we go. Here they come. Come on, boys! The PhDs pull up at the first obstacle, three tonnes of sand. Time to find out if these students are ready to pass their exams. Keep it steady there. Straight through. Easy. Oh, easy. <laughs> easy. Nice big bucket full. Forward. Just drop it, just drop it. Good to Start go. reversing. Start reversing. We've got another decent bucket load. The PhDs are flying through the sand with no hint of a tipping vehicle. That's a oh, good shot. Yes. As soon as they can see the number, they're allowed to grab it. Get out there, get out if you can see it. They unearth the first number in amazing time. So, it's on to obstacle number two, six tonnes of gravel. Oh, yeah, that's a lovely big bucket full. We are destroying this, guys. Keep it going. <laughs> get out, just get in. Wait, 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 wait. The PhDs are setting a blistering pace, unearthing the next number at only their second attempt. So that's the second wow. number. Go, go, go! go. With two numbers in the bag, one final obstacle remains. Nine tonnes of rubble. Nice and easy with this one, nice and easy. Right, right. Triangle right under. Their tactic is to go in low and lift as much as they can with each scoop. You got any more power on it? No. It seems their vehicle doesn't have enough power to penetrate the rubble. Let's try it again. Time for plan B. I think we should start knocking. I think we should. We should start knocking. 
Okay, go, go, go. The idea is to start skimming smaller bucket loads from the top of the pile. Yeah! Yes, that's good. Just keep doing that, keep doing that. Oh, oh, oh. Having knocked off the top, the PhDs are struggling to make any impact on the main body of the pile, and they're in danger of breaking their bucket. Oh, 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 oh. Forward, forward. With time ticking away, they go for another change of tactics. Yeah, they're going for the sides. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Yeah! Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. They're making much better progress, but there's still no sign of the final number, and their hopes of a quick time are fading. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. <sighs> Where is it? I can see it there. I can see it, I can see it! Yeah, yeah they've seen it, they've seen it! Yes! 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 They've done it. It might not be the quick time they were hoping for, but they have unearthed the code to the safe. All they can do now is wait. Good teamwork, boys. Look at this battered bucket. Oh, it's just some more wounds. It's fine. You managed to complete the course. Yeah, we're pretty sure. So after some trouble with the rubble, the PhD successfully completed the course, collecting all three numbers. The question is, can the truckers do any better? It's Safe Breakers, and here at this digger training college, our two teams are racing their digging machines in a fast and filthy time trial. The PhDs went first, their superbly simple design made light work of the sand and the gravel. We are destroying this, guys! Keep it going! <laughs> but they struggle to shift the rubble, losing precious time. Have you got any more power in it? No. I think we should start knocking. I think we should. After a change of tactics, the PhDs beat the rubble back to expose the final number before racing up the ramp and across the finish line. Completed the, the course. Fully completed them. Um, I think their time was pretty good. No, it was awesome. Yeah, we couldn't really happy. Pretty that was awesome. Better. Next up, it's the truckers. Will Mick's last-minute rehearsal mean they can change digger heads without losing much time? Ready, Andy? Let's do it. Here comes the rain and the truckers. <laughs> go, 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 go! As the truckers pull up to our three-ton pile of sand, the question on everyone's lips is, what are they going to use first? The net? Oh, the super spade. Super spade. The super spade's got to be a good bet, hasn't it? Right, right. net's oh, oh. Hang on. Sean's getting... No, it's the net. They're the going to take the net. It's not fast, is it? No, it's... Where's this going? Straight onto that. Having made their choice, they don't seem to be in a hurry to actually get the net on. Do they know it's a race? We need to throw it over. Finally, they're ready to attack the pile. You What's did? it going to do? Well, it's going to sort of, hopefully, go down the back of the pile and drag the top off. Ah. That looks about as useful as that scissor bucket. Don't watch that. It's not good, is it? I would say that was worse than the scissor it's bucket. It's not good. Oh, dear. Poor Kev spent two days making that net. Perhaps a change of tool will mean a change of fortunes. Going for drag bucket. Now, this is the one that you quite fancied, isn't it? Well, yeah, I thought this probably would be the best one. Winch in. Right, winch in. Winch in. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, see, that's working. That's brilliant. That works really well. The drag bucket works like a dream. There, well done, well done. Now, go, 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 come on. Drag forward there. That's good. Yeah, forward. Brilliant! They're just missing oh, the canister, aren't they? There, there it is, there it is, there it is! Jump out! It's there, look! Yeah. <laughs> yes! Go, 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 go! The truckers are back in the race and onto the six-ton pile of gravel. They're sticking with their trusty drag bucket. Pull it off! Once again, it works like a charm. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, yeah. Lift it up, lift it up. That wasn't too bad. That's good. Go, go, go. 
There it is, it's on that side there. I've got it! I've got it! They've made up a lot of time on that second number. Go, go, go! Now it's onto the final obstacle, nine tonnes of rubber. This is where the PhD struggled. A quick time here could put the truckers through to the final. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, whoa, whoa. Whoa, down at the back. Can the drag bucket perform one last miracle? I'm sure this was when they wanted to use their net. Yeah, that was, this was, that, when we that was the what the net was for, for rocks. He said that. Time for Kev's net to forget the shame of the sand and rise to the challenge of the rubble. Come on, the net. The net's in position. <sighs> Not doing all that. Not doing anything. No. Time is really running out, but the truckers have one last ace up their sleeve. Super spade. I think it's time for the spade, Dave. Time for the super spade. Spade. Get this spade. Back. 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 Right. Even super spade is struggling with the rubble. Right. Forward. 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 The truckers are putting everything into it, but the spade just isn't working. Tip it. <laughs> and the strain is starting to tell. Look, one minute, back. No, not back. We're pushing Stop. this. <sighs> the truckers battle bravely on, but with all their options exhausted, it seems the pile of rubble has defeated them. OK, I think we better call an end to this one. Yeah, yeah. Forward Stop. a little bit. Get it in there. Go on. Yes. <laughs> Guys, Mick, do you want to stop the engine a sec? Yeah. No chance. Do you want to climb out? Disappointed. There, there was a lot of flaws in the design, but you only know that, and hindsight's a good thing. I'm still proud of the team. They, they work their socks off. Well, gents, I think it's fair to say that was... Um, Epic. <laughs> Indeed. Good word. Indeed. In so many ways. Both teams put in so much effort to get this far, and, and you've done brilliantly to create extraordinary vehicles. Only one of you is going to go through to try and break our safe and win £5,000, and that team is... PhDs. Yes! <laughs> well done, boys. I'd just like to say, if, if this is the standard <laughs> of engineering students of today, I think... The engineering industry of the future is in safe hands. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mick. Congratulations, lads. Well done, boys. You've been absolutely brilliant competitors. We've certainly enjoyed having you on the show. You lot, you've got to get your vehicle fixed up and you've got to shift 14 tonnes of recycled tarmac. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going home with the money. OK? Go and get yourself sorted. Well done, boys. Well, there you go. That says it all. What can I say? Yeah. We tried our best, yeah. obviously. We're giving a good shot. Wasn't good yeah. Give it a good shot. Yeah. What we've designed isn't good enough. Simple as that. And now, the PhDs must face their biggest challenge yet. 14 tonnes of recycled tarmac. I'm going to enjoy this one. To break the safe, they must once more race the course. Mount the hill and dig out the safe before trying to crack the code that stands between them and £5,000. So, PhDs. Underneath our 14 tonnes of recycled tarmac, with a corrugated iron box protecting our safe. As soon as you see that box, get it out, get it open, but get to the safe. You've got the numbers in front of you. Ian, what number's yours? Four. How's that? Six. James? Nine. Four, six, and nine. I'm sure you've worked out already, but there's six possible options. Be strategic, have a plan, and don't mess it up, OK? <laughs> <laughs> To complete the final challenge, the PhDs have just 12 minutes. And given the pile of rubble took them that long, this is looking like a big ask. Ready, Andy? Let's dig that safe out. Come on, the PhDs! <laughs> the PhDs fly through the race course and up onto the mound. Oh, that's that's all right, good. well that's done! Good. Get it up now, get it up, get it up, get it up. More of that. Get it up, reverse. Empty it out. 
The PhD digger is working, but it's slow progress. On, they've only got 13.8 tonnes to go. They missed. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. With over half the time gone, the PhDs have shifted less than a quarter of the pile. At this rate, they're going away empty-handed. Oh, no, they pulled it up again. <laughs> In desperation, they decide to change tactics. Steely, there's not got time to keep going around. We're just going to have to drop it and drive over it. The idea now is to ram the pile with the bucket, dislodging and digging as much as they can with each hit. Perfect. Go, 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 go. We're going to get a good one this time. That's it. That's good. That's brilliant. That's good digging. The new tactic is working, but it's still slow progress. Yeah. With just under two minutes left, they still haven't located the safe. In there somewhere. Whoa, oh, there it is. Right we there. can see the safe. Come on, just keep doing that. They found the protective box, but can they get to the safe in time? Drop it. Drop the other yeah. Go on, go on, go on. Whoa. <laughs> now go again, go again. With time running out, the PhDs take drastic action. Just try and rip the top off. Come on. Yes! 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 Come on! Well done! Well done, Woody. You can rip it out. Rip it out. They've got the safe, but they've still got to crack the code. And with six possible combinations, they simply don't have the time to try them all. Yes! Come on! Yes! Got it. yes. The first combination hasn't worked. They really only have time for one more attempt. Come on. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Come on! Yeah! Open! Come on, you can do it! Come on! The last bit, the last bit. Get the chain off! Come on! Ten seconds left! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they've done it. I still don't know how, but they've done it. <laughs> 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 our most laid-back contestants yet have given us our most nail-biting finish. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of that was actually digging, <laughs> but that's been the most satisfying safe-breaking I've ever seen. <laughs> it's the second combination I tried just as well. I Boys, <laughs> there is five grand in there if you want to have a look. Oh, <laughs> spin, <laughs> spin it <I'm> over. Amazed, amazed. Amazed, amazed. 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 <laughs> is probably the best one we can sum up in. Yeah. Unbelievable. More, <laughs> more so pleased that our, our, what started out, our design on paper, actually, we built it and it worked. I think we're struggling to get the case off of Ian, but... <laughs> 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 it doesn't seem like he's letting it go. Fun <laughs> <Plan> and escape. <laughs> <laughs>